So, I was surfing through the spectrum pretty hard the other day, and I realized something. I buy the same loadout in Marauders a lot. I wondered how much it really costs. Then I got to thinking, and I wondered if there are certain loadouts that I could run that are cheaper but still effective. Loadouts that could lead to a higher profit margin, because more money good, right? Hell, maybe even some loadouts that are even guaranteed to make money. After all, who doesn't want arbitrary in-game money that can be used to buy spaceships, guns, grenade launchers, this really weird gimp mask which costs five hundred and fifty thousand dollars that just screams hello big daddy i am ready to be your personal pocket put i'll take five wait 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 i'm getting ahead of myself the point is i crunch the numbers so you don't have to let's go over some of the cheapest but still viable loadouts in marauders Before we begin, it's important to note that loadouts in Marauders can be a pretty nuanced topic. A good loadout for one person may not exactly be the right loadout for another. But regardless of what any of us like, the fact is some things are necessary to compete or at minimum survive encounters with good players in this game. I believe those things are a ranged weapon, meds, and food. Now. These become more important to have a lot of the higher tier your armor is and the more you're looking at PvP because there is a lower likelihood of you just getting one tapped. But even if you're out there with nothing but a vac suit and a prayer, you're going to want to sprint, which means you're going to need stamina. And if you're bleeding, you're going to want to stop it. Get some help. With the loadouts we will be discussing today, you are not going to want to stand toe to toe with a top geared four stack, but they will provide you with enough to get through the bots. And if you play it right, a player encounter, or maybe even two. So, without further ado, let's talk about loadout number one, which I like to call the rat shit loadout. I know what you're thinking. WTF crank, that is such a raptist mindset. But it's not what you think. What I mean is that every young rat's dream is to remain unseen by all those which hunt it. A butt crumb or two left behind the only visible traces for any who seek to devour him. Okay, so maybe it's exactly what you thought it was. Sue me. You want people to know you're there only because they run into a dead NPC, an empty loot crate, or a swapped piece of equipment once you find an upgrade. So, what actually is the loadout? Let's take a look. Here, we are actually going to utilize the basic rust bucket loadout with a little bit of extra flavor from the pirate trader. In this particular case, you're going to want to make sure that your appearance is dark but unassuming so that you're not unique and you don't stand out if you do get seen. Oh, yeah. The weapon that we're going to use, uh, it's actually going to be the Luger that you get in the ship, so you'll grab that once you actually launch. No additional ammo will be purchased in the shop. You will only be using the 30 rounds that are given for free in the rust bucket. Technically, I believe 38 if you count what's in Luger. The armor you'll be using is the pouch rig. Again, that will be in the ship. This leaves only four slots to fill before launch. And you will want to fill these slots with the following items. We'll go ahead and hop over to the pirate trader and we'll buy three bandages and three waters. That brings us to a grand total in my case, of $633 for this entire loadout. And this is what it will look like when you go in. Now, if you're just starting out, this may be a little bit higher for you if you don't have reputation with the pirate trader. So conservatively, let's call it 750 max. Now, as far as potential savings, you could ditch two of the bandages if you really wanted to shave off around $400 but that will leave you at a severe disadvantage in any fight, even more than you already are. Bots alone are gonna chip damage off you constantly, no, pretty much no matter how careful you are. Personally, I like to play a bit more aggressive, so I prefer the 40 HP and multiple bleed stops that the bandages provide. 
Now, again, if you didn't love the three bandages, you could swap out two. And for that same price, if we look at the sack bag here, for me is 292. Again, it may be a little bit more for you, uh, but you can always swap that out for a couple of these bandages if that is something that uh, you know speaks to your playstyle. So, what does it all look like at the end, and what do all these numbers really add up to? Let me break it down for you like this. The starting gold in Marauders is 65,000. That means that you would have to die 87 times in a row before your money was ever depleted with this loadout. This is also excluding any crafting options you have, which will also allow you to make equipment for free once it is unlocked. Now that we have that out of the way, let's take a look at what this loadout actually looks like in practice. I played three games with it, so let's quickly break those down. Run 1 actually starts out pretty spicy for me. I hear shots outside of my airlock, and so I'm already on high alert here, and I get no fight just when I get outside. Here I make my biggest mistake. Instead of just grabbing the good stuff and leaving, I try to get everything, even though I hear footsteps, gunshots, and grenades just around the corner, and I end up paying for it. Run 2 was a bit more straightforward. I didn't really get anything worth a ton of money, and I just kind of lose a fight straight up because the guy hits a great headshot on me. Not really much here to go on, but I'll play out the highlights. On run 3, I find a dead Captain NPC and take the Thompson right away, as well as swapping armor. Now I do hear a player, and this player is smart. He hears me as well, he jiggle peeks, and I miss my shot. I'm assuming that he sees that I was not particularly well geared, so he makes the mistake of getting a little bit too aggressive, and here my map knowledge really saves me, and I end up killing the player with an explosive barrel. This time, I had not heard anyone else anywhere near me, and it's not the worst spot to loot, so I grab everything and I go straight out. So, rather than going over every piece of equipment, I'm going to notate my starting money and just subtract that from our total at the end. While I will be selling everything that I got, it is important to keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is actually way more valuable if you keep it and use it. But to keep things simple, I'll just get rid of it all. So we started with $1,012,039. After selling everything in our inventory, that leaves us with $1,112,845. Now if we subtract our starting money from our end money, we get $100,806, minus again the cost of our first two runs, that leaves us with $99,540. That means in one single successful run, we more than doubled our starting money, even with losing two out of the three runs. Again, it's important to note that if we kept some of the things we need for the future, that holds way more value, partly because buying from a trader will always be more expensive than what you can sell anything for. I also want to add that I didn't play any of these games particularly well, and have by no means perfected or practiced the strategy with this loadout. Playing very aggressively, I still managed to make almost 100k in pure untaxed profit. I genuinely believe that if you're down bad, this loadout is a money printing machine that is guaranteed to pull you out of bankruptcy and get you back on your feet. Now let's move on to loadout number 2, the Roach loadout. While you are no longer fecal matter with this loadout, you are a being that must feast on it in order to survive. Like the lowly roach, you pose little real threat, but can sometimes strike fear into the hearts of your enemy. Capitalizing on this brief weakness can often be the thin margin that leads to your success. Failing to do so could send your lifeless corpse spinning down a toilet and into the sewers. So what is the roach loadout? Well. We've upgraded from a Luger to the Uzi. 
and we're going to be taking in ammo. We're going to be taking in 69 millimeter. We'll take three bandages, three waters, and a sack bag. In this case, we will still take the Luger, the pouch rig, and the additional 30 millimeter from the rust bucket, leaving the end build looking something like this. Okay, so just like the first loadout, let's break the roach loadout down. This build runs me a total of $2,707. Again, that may be a bit more depending on your trader rep for you. But what that means is that with the starting money, we would have to die 24 times in a row to deplete that initial $65,000. Now that we've crunched some of the numbers, let's go ahead and see what the roach loadout looks like in practice. So for run one, we landed Terraformer and run into some commandos right off the bat, which is great for us. This clip is a perfect example of why I like to bring the extra bandages we discussed in the first loadout. Sometimes you just miss, and without this health I regain, I automatically lose a much more important fight that happens later on this map. Even with the small amount of white health missing from our main health bar, you can see that we nearly lose to this heavily geared player who tries to ambush us. However, a few jiggle peeks and aggressive final repeek after a pretty rough trade, along with a headshot, nets us the win. Here I run and then start to heal, forgetting I had picked up a large med kit. I make the mistake of trying to use the large first aid while my small first aid is still ticking, which negates the health the large first aid would have given me. I will go ahead and skip the majority of the looting, but here you can see our luck continues as it seems the player we killed was the victor in a previous fight between more players with solid loot. Overall, the total of loot we extracted with can be seen here. Run number two ended up going way off the rails, but it did remind me of something that I haven't covered at all in this video so far. Hello. And that is, sometimes VoIP can be your ally. We just we wet our oil, our ship broke down. You don't have to fight every single player you come across. Come go the one you did. Wow. He is the one. Are you lying? No, we're oh. friendly. No, we're friendly, dog. We're just questing. We're yet. Security. Are you in the gate room by any chance? No. Uh, hello. Security. That's me, you just saw me. <laughs> He's over there. He's a little tempo. Hey, come over here, we're gonna loot you up. No, 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 I'm, I'm, don't, don't loot me up, I'm, uh, I'm working on a video. Uh, okay. Thank you, though, I, pre I appreciate you, that's very kind. I'll be in the video. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, here's a motor roll right here. This is me, this is me, this is me with the Uzi right here. Yeah, we're cool. Hi, Mom. Uh, Hello. Say for your video. Hi, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Me and my, me and my 33 subscribers, say what's up, boys. <laughs> Oh, hello, 33 uh, subscribers. Me when I'm on the, on the perfect go. set. Hey, bro, we trying. Oh, uh, thank keep you. Keep following him, man. Keep following my boy right here. Well, you heard it here first. This stand-up individual suggested that you follow me. And so, I think I'll take a quick moment to just say, if you are enjoying the video, please like and subscribe. And whether you agree or think I'm way off base, I would love to read your suggestions in the comments below. As one of the players dropped me their keycard, I recognized their name and knew I couldn't count this run because, admittedly, a geared friendly force stack isn't exactly the norm. I explained to this crew what I was doing, and while I won't count this run toward the total, I think this is an absolutely viable playstyle if you're open to it. Yes, some players will shoot you in the back, but in all honesty, I have found that to be the exception rather than the rule. Bet, bet, yeah. Okay. All right, you do you do your signs, man. All right, all right. Thank yeah, you, thank yeah, you, thank you. Good luck, boys. GGs. Nice Very to meet you guys. You. Whew. Okay. Let's get back into the groove with what I like to call run two. Point five. We landed Planet Killer and kill a few NPCs off the bat. I got some practice with the stamp, and all in all, it's going pretty well. The only player we run into has about our same gear level. We end up winning the fight and gather as much gear as we can before leaving. Admittedly, I don't know all the best loot spots on this map still, so our loot 
isn't that great as we had out of the pods, but it's really nothing to snuff at. Run 3, well, technically run 4, turned out to be my favorite run during editing because, well, this happened. Since we're already up, I'm going to play this one hyper-aggressive. Okay, so with all of the runs concluded, let's count up the totals. So we survived 2 out of the 3 runs that we ran. If we exclude the run where we met the friendly team, our starting money on run number one was $1,073,767. After all repairs and sales, our total was $1,238,104, making our gross income that run $164,337. For the Planet Killer run, we had starting money of $1,238,000, $816. And we ended up with $1,283,957, making our gross income from that run $45,141. Now, adding our gross totals together, that makes $209,478, and subtracting the price of the three kits at $2,707 a piece. For a total of 8,121, we get a total profit of $201,357, more than double what we made with the last kit, and that is more than three times our starting income. Alright, I know that none of this is a guarantee, but the numbers are interesting if nothing else. So what do I think? Well, while I do think having an Uzi off the bat is better, I don't really think there's a huge distinction between these two kits, apart from making your first encounter a little bit easier. With either one, it's best to scavenge what you can, make a play or two, and get out. So what about other kits? Well, I was originally going to make one big video, but this is already getting pretty long. So if it seems like you guys are interested, I'll go ahead and continue this with a series where I tally up the costs of different loadouts, test them, and see if we make a net profit or loss. Maybe in the next video, I could do some of the most common kits that I see. <clears throat> but let me know by liking, subscribing, and letting me know some of your favorite kits to run in the comments below. I genuinely love to hear about them. Oh, and by the way, I, I failed Algebra 2, so, you know, maybe double check my work. Anyway, this is Crank Lopez signing off. I'll catch you guys later.